Oh, Randy here, K7AGE. I recently had a QSO on my Echolink node from a newly licensed amateur radio operator who had interest in getting on 6 meters, but his concern was a lack of activity. Most of the time, 6 meters is fairly quiet for short distance communications. But in the summertime, sporadic E opens up and that scatters the magic ether dust and we're able to operate some very long distances with some simple antennas and low power. Summertime, there's also several contests which bring out the operators. So this is a good opportunity to get on six. And this is what this video is about, to get you pointed in the right direction to become six meter active. Back in late 2001 and early 2002, there were some tremendous six meter band openings. I remember six meters sounding like 20 meters does today. Um, from my home here with a three element six meter antenna and five watts on six meters, with my FT817, I worked, uh, here's WB2 MRX in Albany, New York. I, Work W1HI in uh, oh in Rhode Island with five watts. Here's WA2LXG from Alcala, Florida, in five watts. Ah, Bill in New Jersey, N2NJ. I worked him once with the beam. What was really interesting, I stood outside with my FT817 with a rubber ducky antenna and worked him from the driveway, portable. K1DG in New Hampshire, again, all over the East Coast. I've also worked Hawaii. I've got two cards here from stations in, um, in um, Hawaii, WH60 and, and uh, K6MIO slash KH6, again, with five watts. So when the band opens, you can really work some, some pretty good DX. Contests. These are the times that many operators become six meter radioactive. I'm making this video in May of 2009. The contests that are coming up right away are the ARRL June VHF uh, QSOL party. That's June, the weekend of June 13th and uh, through the 15th. The ARRL field day brings out a lot of people on six. That's uh, June 27th through the 28th, that weekend. CQ Magazine has worldwide uh, VHS, VHF contests in July 18th and 19th. If you're watching this video beyond those dates, check with the ARRL website, CQ Magazine website, RSGB website, or search with Google for six meter contests to find contests that are maybe in your area. Again, the summertime is when sporadic E opens, so if the band opens up and there's a lot of people on hilltops and stuff operating, it's a good opportunity for your new station to be able to work some of these contest people. And also remember, contesters want to work you because you're another point. Okay, for equipment, you're going to need kind of two things to get going. One is a radio, which you may already have and the other is the antenna. Many of the uh, current radios, the ICOM 706, 7000s, the ASU uh, 857, 897, 817, the 450, the 950, um, the Kenwood, uh, the TS50 I think was a, had a model that had six meters in it, you know, a 570 with uh, six meters in it. These radios are all perfectly fine. We're probably going to be operating sideband since this is going to be your first try at this, most likely. Um, there may be some FM activity, but not very much. Most of it will be sideband and CW, but you can make a lot of contacts on, on sideband. For an antenna, I am posting another video of an example of how I have built a 6 meter dipole antenna. Now the overall antenna length is less than 10 feet, so that means it's less than 5 feet on each side of the coax. The shield of the coax connects to one side of the antenna, the center conductor of the coax connects to the other element of, of the antenna. Everything is insulated. You can build this with wire and hang it from a tree. 
Um, you can make it with PVC tubing and run wire down the tubing, or you can use some aluminum tubing and support it with wood or PVC. So you can put together an antenna pretty simply. You probably don't have to really go out and buy much of anything. Now, if you're gonna operate during the contest, you really ought to study what the contest is and the rules, and you get those off of the websites. Typically, it's gonna be some type of exchange. Grid squares are real common in a VHF type of contest. Um, maybe a serial number or your age or your name. You have to look at the rules to find out what the exchange is going to be. Um, or you can listen for a few minutes if there's a lot of activity and probably figure that out. If you want to get some, some contesting software, I, did a, I posted a message up on the uh, Northern California uh, Contest Club's uh, mailing list asking about what software they would kind of recommend for beginners. And the majority of the responses came back recommending the N3FJP. Again, that's N3FJP. Um, there's and their software package. It's not free. There's some other free ones around, like N1MM uh, is, is free, but it's a lot more high complicated. Um, the N3FJP software is very simple. Um, they have different software or uh, different programs for each contest. I believe the field day and the VHF contest from ARL, one is $6 and the other is 10 so it's pretty low cost, I forget which is which, or for $39 you can buy the package which has everything. And I'll have a video posted shortly that shows you how to operate the software. I mentioned grid squares. What is a grid square? This is a mapping system called based on the Maidenhead grid squares. And basically the whole surface of the earth is divided up into one by two degree squares. For the United States, you can get a map like this off the ICOM website and it shows all the grid squares for the United States. So where I'm located in California here, I am Charlie Mike, which is this area here of the map, 99, which is north of, north of Sacramento. Um, you can find your grid square by, if you're a U.S. ham, you can go to the QRZ site, put in your uh, call sign, and click on the more details. It'll bring up and show you your grid square. Um, search for grid squares on the ARRL website. There's some information there. Uh, I believe there's a calculator on the website. Or you can Google for grid square, grid square calculator. Um, some GPS receivers will allow you to see your grid square. Um, some of these calculators will figure out your grid square from your GPS location or maybe even from your zip code. So that's a piece of information that you'll need when you're working many of these contests for part of your exchange. Operating six meters, where do you operate? It's a large band from 50 to 54 megacycles. For sideband, we start at 50.125 and go up from there. Now 50.125 is a special frequency. It's called the calling frequency. This is a frequency that people monitor hoping to hear stations coming through to indicate that the band is open. If you tune around 6 and you don't hear anybody, <clears throat> tune down to .125, call CQ. If you get a station coming back to you, you really should move up the band, move up to 130 or 135, and continue your QSO there. That's the operating etiquette for, for using the calling frequency. Establish a, a QSO and then please move up the band. Six meter propagation can be very interesting. You may be working a station that's four or 500 miles away from you and it may just be from different regions of the country. If you go to some of these websites that I'll post some links over on the side, you can check out what the propagation is and if stations are, uh, are working each other. You'll see on some of these maps, um, paths drawn between where they're working. So, you know, if I live on the West Coast and I see a bunch of um, 
stations working each other on the east coast but nothing stretching to the west you know it's an indication that hopefully the west will open up but it may not so it's part of the magic of the magic band of six meters you really never really know what's going to be happening but when it opens up it can really be fun you can work a lot of stations quickly with very simple setups so i hope i've given you some enough information to Maybe spark a little interest on your part to try six meters. Again, a lot of times there's not a lot of activity on six because the band isn't opened up. You'll work a lot of maybe local stations. Maybe there's a net in your area. But contests bring out a lot of operators with big stations and hilltops, and they're looking for a lot of stations to work. If you have a radio that has six meters in it, a 706 from ICOM, a 7000, an 850, 70 ASU, a Kenwood, whatever, it has six meter sideband. You don't need a lot of power. Five watts to 100 watts will work just fine. I'll be posting another video soon which shows my example of how I built a six meter dipole antenna out of aluminum tubing and PVC. You can make it out of wire and wood. You can make it so you can take it apart and transport it easily in the car. So you can go up to a hilltop, hang it in a tree, tie it off to the luggage rack in your car, get it up in the air a few feet. There's contesting software. The N3FJP software is, uh, looks to be ideal for beginners. It'll help you uh, keep your log. When you get done with the contest, you can submit your log to the contest group and you know a few months later see your call in the listings, uh, see how well you did. And maybe next year you can do it again and try harder and you know work on increasing your, your score. Six meters is called the magic band really because it, when it opens up it can be a lot of fun you can really work some long distances the operators the people will want to know your grid square and exchange them i have my grid square on my qsl card there's awards based on how many grid squares you work i believe for six meters you can get the um, award from arrl when you've worked 100 different uh, grid squares Get on the map here for the U.S., there's lots of grid squares in, within the United States. So think about it. The dates are coming up soon in June. If you're watching this video past the, the contest that I've spoken about, check on uh, various ARL, CQ, RSGB, search for six meter contest, find a contest time, and go out and become radioactive. Give it a try. It may not cost you much. If you have a radio, you can put together a simple antenna and go out and have some fun. Maybe I'll see you on six. I plan to be on the VHF contest. 73, Randy, K7AGE.